What's going on, everyone? So, when the NBA announced the NBA in-season tournament, many people, myself included, were a little weary, right? I thought it had the potential, but I wasn't, like, a huge fan. I, I, I had questioned how competitive is this going to be, right? I get these are competitive athletes that have just determination and competitive nature, and they want to be the alphas and all that stuff. I get that. But it's not the NBA championship. It's not the NBA playoffs. It's this new tournament style type of game, NCAA tournament like. And I just, I had my reservations about it. But I have to give credit where credit is due because this in season tournament was fantastic, right? Everyone has bought in. Everybody was, you know, the big names, the big stars have all promoted it you know, have all really gone out and put their best foot forward. And we've gotten legit playoff level basketball five or six months before playoff basketball. It's been great. In all honesty, I, I love the games. And you had all these different groups and it's the first ever introduction to this. So there's always going to be room for improvement. And, and as we progress, we'll see how this grows. But for the first one ever, I thought this was a grand slam. And then you add in the fact the final four teams, I thought, you know, you had the, the Lakers and the Bucks, right? These are the two teams that very likely could meet up in the NBA Finals. The Lakers had to go through the Phoenix Suns, another team that could be in the NBA Finals, right? The Indiana Pacers had to go through the Boston Celtics, another team that could be in the NBA Finals. And you just saw these back and forth games with the Indiana Pacers beating both the Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee Bucks to reach this cup finals. And then the Lakers, you know, for being honest, they had a much easier path, a much easier route to the cup, but they still had to beat Phoenix several times. And with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, like they were 15 and two up to that point. Like, so it wasn't like this super easy cakewalk and new Orleans was coming off of a major win. They were looking like a excellent team going into this game and the Lakers handled business ran through the Pelicans, and now you got an Indiana Pacers and Lakers championship for the in-season tournament, which is great because you have this nice mixture of the iconic franchise that is good for marketing, that is good for promotion, that is good for all the ins and outs in the Los Angeles Lakers. You have arguably the greatest, if not the greatest player ever in LeBron James, in the first ever in-season tournament championship. And then you have a, a young, up-and-coming, fourth youngest team in the league, just high-powered offense, fun, exciting, superstar in the making, Tyrese Halliburton reaching the cup as well. And you saw both of this like, oh, okay, the best team made it through. They were the one seed, undefeated, are now in the championship. And then you have that underdog story of the Indiana Pacers, who went undefeated, went on a run, took out the Boston Celtics, took out the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes, those both of those teams might beat Indiana in five games in a, in a playoff series, but guess what? In a one-and-done environment, you don't have to be the better team. You just have to be the best team that night. And the Indiana Pacers were both those nights. And now you have this crash course, and I'm just excited for this. I mean, the Indiana Pacers, we'll start with them. They are, again, fourth youngest team in the league. Exciting, fun to watch. Historically great offense. I mean, literally, historically great offense. Defense is concerned with them, right? They don't have, they have, like, a historically bad defense. They give up a ridiculous amount of points. Like, the Indiana Pacers' sole purpose, sole goal is to just outscore you, basically. But you've seen the Indiana Pacers, who have been one of the best teams in the fourth quarter, in tight games against the two top teams in the Eastern Conference and the two teams that very well could win the NBA championship this year, you saw the Indiana Pacers handle business, close down the stretch. Tyrese Halliburton hit huge shots. You gotta remember, the, the Pacers, it wasn't like the Pacers were up 20 late in the fourth and cruised to a win. No, I mean, they were down. They had to come back. Right, they had this back and forth. You know, they're down seven at one point. Like, it, like in the fourth, just had this battle and this grind. 
ended up pulling it out, ended up hitting big shots down the stretch, ended up getting stops. Like, they did their job. And they did it excellent. Tyrese Halliburton hit some huge shots. I mean, that guy is becoming a superstar right before our eyes. He's living and relishing in this moment. I mean, he drops 27 against Boston, follows that up with 26 against the Bucks, And both of those games collectively comes up with 28 assists. 28 assists. And, oh yeah, by the way, he committed zero turnovers. I mean, that's insane. Absolutely insane. The guy is doing everything you could ask for. He's a, a true point guard in every sense of the term. He's playing like the best point guard in the league right now. I mean, by far. I mean, how many like true point guards are there anymore? Like most of the point guards in today's NBA are more scoring. They're they're capable of making plays. They're capable of finding the open man. They're capable of running the pick and roll a little bit and, you know, do the things necessary in today's NBA. But they're not like you know, they're farther from the Chris Pauls of the world. Where Tyrese Halliburton is about as true of a true point guard as he gets. He makes guys better. He elevates everyone. You know, he's got some guys that might barely be fringe rotation guys that he's making look fantastic. He even has guys that were supposed to be these reclamation projects in like an Obi Toppin. And having having him look like a stud out there. I mean, you got to give the Pacers a world of credit, right? The fact that they've made it this far... Well, Tyrese Halliburton even talked about it, where he was just like, we weren't like everyone said we weren't supposed to be here, and look, we're here. And they, you know, in many people's eyes, they weren't. I didn't, I, if I'm being honest, I didn't think that they'd get bo- past Boston. You know, again, there's always the possibility anybody could be anybody in any given night, but then they, they get through Boston. It was like, okay, well, that, that was fun. Now, now, now you got to go play Milwaukee with Dame and Giannis, and it's like, you know, I, I just, I didn't see it, if I'm being honest. I didn't. I took. The Bucks and the Lakers in this spot, and Indy ended up pulling it out. So you got to give them credit. And then from the Lakers' standpoint, best defense in the league. They're number one in the tournament, which is going to be very interesting because you have the best offense, historically great offense, and the best defense going head-to-head, right? Defense usually wins championships. If push comes to shove at the end of the game— is Indiana going to be able to get the stops on the Lakers like the Lakers should be able to get on Indiana? That's going to be a real question that we're going to see. Or will the Lakers just not be able to contain Indiana? That's something else, right? Indiana can put up numbers in a hurry. They transition. The Lakers are much better transition defense this year than they were last year, but it's still a point of concern. And Indiana loves a fast pace. They love to push it. They love to get up and down the court. They love to get out in transition. They take care of the basketball because Tyrese Halliburton doesn't really turn it over, right? So are the Lakers going to be able to slow him down? Are the Lakers going to be able to create turnovers, get second chance points, capitalize on their size? Because that's the advantage. Indiana has the advantage in the guard play. Tyrese Halliburton, Bruce Brown, uh, you got TJ McCollum, right? They have excellent guard play. But the Lakers have the size, the perimeter guys. They have very capable guards as well. Is LeBron James and Anthony Davis, are they... I'm not worried about LeBron. I mean, LeBron's LeBron, right? But is Anthony Davis going to be able to show up, right? Because... If Tyrese Halliburton and Miles Turner outplay LeBron and AD, well then, Indiana could very well win this game. But there's no reason that Miles Turner should be able to outplay Anthony Davis. Miles Turner is an incredible center. You know, he's top, what, five in the league maybe? Top seven at worst somewhere in that ballpark? Right, out after, you know, AD, Joel, and, and uh, Joker, uh, Jokic, the Joker, Outside of those three, right? I mean, you could put Miles Turner up there in that conversation. I think just both sides of the basketball, his ability to stretch the floor, all of that, right? So you have that, but that guy's not Anthony Davis, right? Can Austin Reeves continue to perform? I mean, Austin Reeves has been absolute money in the in the big games, big moments, postseason, stuff like that. He's been great in this in-season tournament, right? He's he's not afraid of the moment, all that stuff. If he can if he can continue 
to perform the way that he's performing, the Lakers are going to be in good shape. The Lakers are going to be in a very good spot, right? LeBron James should be able to at least, bare minimum, keep pace with Tyrese Halliburton, right? LeBron should be able to bare minimum, you know, give you 27, 8, and 8, where Tyrese Halliburton will probably give you, you know, somewhere around 25, 5, and 12, right? So, I do think LeBron James and, and Tyrese Halliburton, at worst, will be a bit of a wash, right? Because both of them also have an incredible impact on their respective teams. I think the big factor is going to be Anthony Davis. Can Anthony Davis perform? Can Anthony Davis deliver? You know, I'm excited for this matchup. I really think it's going to be an incredible matchup. I think it's going to be very dynamic. I, th- I think it'll be a close game. Um... I lean towards the Lakers down the stretch. Look, Indiana has been one of the better teams in the fourth quarter. Tyrese Halliburton has been one of the best players in the fourth quarter. But LeBron James has been the best, and the Lakers have been the best in the fourth quarter. Lakers have been the best defensive team in the league. The Lakers have had one of the top offenses in the fourth quarter. Right? Like, If this is a close game, I just trust LeBron James, his experience... The Lakers' overall experience, because, I mean, this is a team that was just in the conference finals, like the the key core guys were at least, and this is a team that has multiple guys that have won championships, and LeBron James and Anthony Davis, that were the stars, that were the main guys that know what it takes. Indiana, they're getting and gaining the experience, right? Like, I just, I trust push come to shove at the end of the games, LeBron James to go and get a W, right? Say the game's tied or Lakers are down one with like a minute left. I trust the Lakers to get the stops just based on their defense and LeBron James to outperform Tyrese Halliburton and the Indiana Pacers for a minute stretch. Like I just, I have the faith in LeBron. So personally, I think the Lakers and LeBron James will handle business. I don't think this is going to be a cakewalk, though. And like I said, Indiana is more than capable of winning this game. They just proved it on their run to this point. And in a one-and-done game, anything could happen. Indiana is more than capable of just shooting the lights out, right? Like, the Lakers could play an excellent game. Excellent. But if the Pacers, you know, are shooting 55% from three or something like that and not turning the ball over, then they could still win this game because they just have that high-powered offense. Are the Lakers going to be able to score enough to maintain? And then will they actually be able to get the stops? I think they will, but time was up. We'll find out by the end of the day. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do you think uh, the Lakers get the win? Uh, do you lean towards the Indiana Pacers? Do you think this will be a good game? Do you think this will kind of be like a, you know, kind of boring, maybe a blowout one way or the other? Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. 